So thank you. So today I will talk about EIP4844 economics and how uh, rollups may react to the uh, new market that arises after introducing the proposal. So this is a joint work together with David Krapis, who is a researcher at Ethereum Foundation, and Edward uh, Felton, who is co-founder and chief scientist at uh, Ochain Labs, where I'm myself researcher. Okay, so a bit of motivation. We heard a lot about Rollup, so I'll be quick. We know that they are there to scale the Ethereum, because Ethereum needs scaling. But uh, on its own, Ethereum can help Rollups by allocating more data availability or more resources from the validator side. And this EIP serves that reason. So very short introduction to Rollups. Uh, so the transactions are sent by users to a sequencer. There is one designated sequencer that uh, orders the transactions for the execution. So sequencer receives the transactions and then passes it to the execution stage to validators or uh, parties that execute the transactions in some order. So there was some discussion what order we want to take, but for now I think that it's simple first comes first, first come first serve. Uh, order. So at some point when there are enough transactions uh, collected from the sequencer or there is some another designated party sometimes called page poster but in case of Arbitrum let's say it's a sequencer post a badge to the Ethereum mainnet. So this is how things stand uh, at the moment. And then uh, in case of uh, optimistic rollups validators coordinate to update the state of the uh, rollup to the Ethereum and there is some fraud, 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 fraud proof mechanism deployed. But depending on the rollup technology, there are different ways of uh, updating the state. Okay, so how does uh, new proposal help rollups? We know that a big part of rollup costs, so transaction fees, I would say in case of Arbitrum it's like 70%, are call data costs. So the cost that uh, batch poster incurs posting them on the Ethereum mainnet. And if uh, allocating new resources lowers this cost, that will lower the transaction fees on the rollup. And uh, ideally, the lowering coefficient can be 70% or three times. And this way, rollups, of course, reach more users because transactions just become three times cheaper and uh, through rollups Ethereum also reaches more users and that's the goal too. So now how the proposal works, it creates a parallel market, let's call it data market or blob market. Originally it was proposed that target would be two blobs per block and four would be maximum number of blocks uh, accepted in the block and currently it stands at three uh, blobs per block and six maximum. So this is very similar to the dynamic V update rule, EIP 1559. So you also recognize that maximum is two times the target. In case of uh, gas market also we have maximum 30 million gas versus 15 million gas target. And also there is a matching increase in price if maximum number of blocks is achieved, the price goes up one eighth or 12.5%. And if it's an empty block or zero blocks in the context of new EIP, the price decreases by one eighth or 12.5%. Okay, so now uh, what do rollups do? They get a stream of transactions and uh, as I said, once there are enough transactions, the page poster takes them, uh, usually compresses. That's how uh, it saves on the data posting costs. And in case of optimistic rollups, it just, uh, page poster just post compressed raw data of transactions. But in case of CK rollups, it's some combination of compressed raw data and state diffs. It was already dis discussed during and then also, well, of course, there are different 
size rollups. Some rollups have high transaction arrival rate for throughput, and some have low. And the decision problem, we look at it, how often should the rollups post, and depending what is the price of blobs, and what is the price of the gas on the regular main net. So to make the problem interesting, we introduce delay cost. Of course, if there is no delay cost, maybe we never post. So we post because uh, transaction senders, users want some kind of L1 finality for their transactions, and they care about how quickly it is uh, posted on L1, because it also is some proxy measure of security. Okay, so we model the delay with the uh, linear cost function, and in this case, uh, aggregate delay for rollups is quadratic in time. Okay, so there are a few parameters in the model. Uh, we have, of course, transaction ar arrival rate, so proxy measure for the size of a rollup. There is block price that uh, we will later assume that it's uh, determined in the equilibrium and it's fixed. For each block, there is some fixed uh, metadata posting cost. Now, it's not actually fixed, it, it depends on the gas price on the main market, but for the analysis we assume it's fixed. And then there is regular market, gas market, and uh, for the model also we assume that uh, it's fixed, the price, or at least the hope is that it is stable, the price of, of the gas. And that's what uh, EIP 1559 promises, that it finds the equilibrium price quickly. And there is, again, one more parameter for the metadata of the regular market transaction or batch posting. Okay, so total cost of a rollup, or you can translate it to a transaction by dividing total cost of a rollup by the number of transactions. It's a sum of two costs. It's posting cost, so that's the cost that is observed. We see how much batch poster pays in each rollup uh, transaction occurs and needs to pay. And there is some aggregate delay cost that we also try to minimize, but this is not observed. But we know that it exists and rollups try to minimize that too. Okay, so now what are the differences between these two markets? Main difference is that blob price is fixed. So no matter how much data you put in the blob, you pay the same price. While in case of using the regular market, the price that you pay or the cost you pay is proportional to how much data you put in the batch. Okay, other than that, there are no differences between these two markets. Okay, so one thing we can notice very quickly is that if the price or cost per byte is higher in case of blob, you will never post blob and you will always go with the regular market. But uh, there is still a trade-off, because if you wait long enough to fill up the block, it can be that you are incurring very high delay cost. And that depends on the uh, roll-up size or the roll-up transaction arrival rate. So if uh, roll-up is large enough, maybe it doesn't care because it fills up blocks very quickly, but if roll-up is small or medium size, then it cares uh, about delay costs, because it takes a long time long time to fill up the block. In either case, Rollup can optimize the posting time for blob and posting time for batch, because in case of batch, it is uh, very easy. You just solve the first order condition. So you write down the total cost function and find the time when to post. And the same you can do with blobs, but uh, it can be that you reach the uh, maximum size, and we assume that in case of batches, there is no maximum size. Of course, in reality, there is some maximum size that uh, you cannot post more, more than that in case of batches as well. Okay, so now let's assume that Rollup knows when, when is the optimal time to post the blob and when is the optimal time to post the batch. Now it compares these two solutions and figures out actually what should be the 
price of the blog so that blog posting is more favorable for the rollout. And if it's not favorable, then it switches to regular market, task market. Okay, so here one assumption is that rollout can switch between these two markets. So data availability and the TIP uh, or, or the blog um, market offers and uh, gas market. And we know that in case of optimistic rollup or in case of Arbitrum, that is doable. And I believe that for ZK, it can also be done. So it is fine to use one data availability option one time and next round use another availability option. Okay, then observation we already made was that terabyte cost in the block market is lower than terabyte cost of a transaction in the um, regular gas market. Okay, so to obtain further results, we assume continuous time, so assume that transaction arrival rate is the same and they arrive continuously. And also equilibrium price for the blobs. But as I said, the dynamic fee mechanism promises that uh, it, and actually there are some empirical studies that, uh, so the gas cost in the regular market reaches equilibrium price and we hope that in case of blobs also it will reach uh, equilibrium price quickly, and it will be steady for some time period at least. Also, we assume that rollups are myopic in the sense that they only care about their costs and benefits in this round, so they are not forward looking and they don't, for example, try to kick out their competitors out of the market. So they don't apply any aggressive strategies or some sophisticated strategies. So they just care about optimization in this round. They are not strategic in some sense. So with these assumptions, we obtain first proposition that there exists some threshold so that if, if the transaction arrival rate of the rollup is lower than this threshold, then it will switch to using L1 gas market. And this is kind of intuitive. If you're small enough, you take too long to fill up the blob space completely, then you will switch to much more flexible uh, L1 gas market, but you will pay more per byte. But you will save on the delay costs. And next we look at the problem of merging or uh, joint blog posting. And we make uh, few assumptions. The first assumption is that rollups can actually share the blog. And this is not a trivial assumption. It needs some engineering work. So they are able to extract their own information from the posted blog and not extract the information of the other rollup. And also we assume that in the equilibrium state, they, we are both posting the blobs. And this is important because if one rollup is posting blobs and another rollup is small enough to post uh, on the regular market and that one joins, then the blob price goes actually up and it might not be beneficial for the large rollup. Okay, but if both of them are posting blobs and they join into posting blobs together, then the blob price actually goes down and both of them benefit from that. Okay, so that's uh, our proposition that both of them, both of the rollups, independent of what are their transaction rates, improving, uh, uh, improve their costs if they join the blob posting. Okay, so, so far so good. Both of them are improving, but now interesting thing starts. How should they share the costs of posting? Because that's the part of cost that is observable. So this is a bit controversial. So one very quick idea is to share the cost proportionally. So if uh, one roll up, fills up 70% of the blob and another fills up 30%. So maybe they just share 70, 30. And it turns out that this is actually neither fair nor realistic because note that small rollup saves a lot of 
delay time at the expense of large rollout. So it only provides 30% of the data and it already posts as if the, the blob was full of its own data. So per byte cost is as if it was its own data. But of course it's not, because 70% of the data came from the large rollout. So large rollout has some bargaining power. So like large rollout says, I provided you very low delay time, so maybe you compensate on the blob posting costs. And instead of going with some definitions of what is fair allocation of costs, we went with the axiomatic approach. So let's list the properties that the cost sharing rule should satisfy and then find the cost uh, sharing rule. Okay, so there is this very old and very famous Nash bargaining solution that exists in the economic literature that takes this axiomatic approach, these properties, very reasonable properties. When you see them, you're like, okay, these are very reasonable, uh, nothing against them. But that already gives exact cost sharing rule. So we have this disagreement point, so that's where bargaining comes in. If they don't join, we know what are their transaction uh, fees for each dollar, and we know what happens if they join uh, post and blobs. So the only thing we need to decide is how they split the costs. And the proposition says that actually the bargain solution uh, splits in favor of a large rollup. So large rollup always pays less than proportional. If a large rollup provided 70% of the blob, it always pays less than 70%. Okay. But on the other hand, it always pays more than half, so it's not very dramatic. It always pays more than half, that's good enough. And also, in this solution, we have that small rollup always improves more in relative terms. So if large rollup improves some percentage, let's say 10%, small rollup improves more than 10%. But usually, I think in case of 70 versus 30, and this is the only parameter we actually care, how, how much each rollup provides. Uh, improvement of the small rollup is like 25%, while large rollup is like 10%. So small rollup improves more. Okay, so very quick discussion on the topic. We showed that rollups can improve by merging their blog posting, and this can be generalized to more rollups and to other data availability options. And cost splitting depends on, only on the relative sizes of rollups. And also rollups that themselves don't make it to blog posting because they are small enough. They may team up with other rollups and join the blog posting. It will increase the blog price, that is correct, but it can be that uh, they still mm, make it in the equilibrium and now they prefer to post blobs and lower their transaction fees. And so there was a lot of simplification and in the future work we want to look at uh, different extensions. One is compression rates. So far we didn't assume compression rates and this is important because this actually favors the large rollup or not, doesn't favor the small rollup because small rollup is not gathering enough data to have good compression. Okay, but actually rollups, as we know, save a lot on the compression as well. And also, uh, we assume that the price is found in the equilibrium quickly, but what happens if it doesn't, and how rollups react to that? And another one is uh, to relax the myopic assumption and assume that now rollups are more strategic and they can post more aggressively. What happens then? It can be that larger rollups can post small blobs and they push out small rollups out of the market because of that. So they drive up the price of blob. And so we also want to look into how the dynamics of the market will develop. If, for example, EIP uh, provides, sorry, EIP provides more and more resources for data availability, if execution moves to the rollups, for example, 
then it can be that EIP provides more blobs per block and lowers the gas consumption of the other resources. Then it's interesting to see how uh, it evolves. For example, what kind of new users are we onboarding? And that will, of course, depend on the distribution of user types. And user types are like how much do they care about security? How much do they care about speed and fees? So I think I'm out of time. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, either now or uh, I'll be here for some time. Thank you.